Success, is it really a secret? I don't think so. Join me as I interview guests from different cultures and backgrounds who have overcome incredible challenges to create the life they live today. Thousand likes, celebrity status, lots of money or big cars, these are things that come and go and do not define true success. So what is it? And most importantly, how do we create it? If you are a child, teen, or adult trying to understand how to achieve this word, then you are not alone and you won't want to miss a single episode of The Secret to Success Isn't So Secret. This is Christy Maggio and the key is right here. It's not a great secret, so don't just listen, learn, and take action. with Daniel Barona. I want to welcome you to the Secret to Success Isn't So Secret podcast. Tell me, how old are you and where did this desire and to be such an inspiration to others come from? Mm. Well, um, I'm from Costa Rica. I was born in Costa Rica. I grew up in Costa Rica and right now I'm 16 years old. Um, and it all started since, since I was a kid, I used to always dress as a superhero and visualize myself with superpowers and flying in the skies and just helping people and saving humanity. (laughs) And, um, but then after that, I used to always explore a lot. I used to, I, I was a magician for a long time. I was a clown, a football, a soccer player, and a lot of things. And then I was always trying to be someone else I wasn't, you know, because the reality was that I was really different to everyone. At eight years old, I was already a musician, a singer. I used to... Uh, play the drums already and create content for YouTube, edit my videos. So I was always like the, the weird kid, you know, the weirdo <laughs> in, the, in the school. So, um, and I was already vegetarian. I, I was vegetarian. I'm vegetarian since I am five years old. So I was always uh, the kid that is not normal in the school. So a lot of people judged me. A lot of people bullied me. Um, and I didn't feel good with myself. I didn't feel accepted in society, in the school. So I started just, I started being someone else I wasn't, right? And I just started acting as a popular kid to, to, <laughs> to, to be part of this group of the important kids, the important, the the popular kids in the school, you know, you always see the popular kids as the ones that bully others or judge others. It's always the same in the movies, right? Mm -hmm. So I was one of those kids and I started judging other people and I didn't like, I didn't fight with any other people. I didn't like that, but it was just like judging and um, criticizing the, the, different people, the, the different kids that were in the school. Um, but every time I, I did it, I, 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 used, I, I, I was feeling so scared inside, like outside of me, I was just, oh, you know, I don't care. I don't care going to school. I don't care going to class. Uh, but inside of me, I was just scared. I was feeling lonely. I was feeling unhappy. I was just feeling so empty. And I didn't like it. Every time I used to, after school, I used to uh, go to the, to, to, to my house and I was just feeling totally like another person because I was with, the, with my family, with the people that truly loved me, right? Mm-hmm. So I was feeling like, why am I trying to be someone else? I am not in the school. I'm not feeling like I have the friends that I would like to have because I'm not myself, And until the day that I was just so done with everything, I was done with just trying to be someone else I wasn't and being so scared. And, and I just started trying new things, you know, as I told you, I I became a clown for a long time and then a magician, a soccer player. Then I wanted to be an architect, uh, a lot of things until I just started helping people. Uh, I just started helping people without, not like sharing a message, but just for example, a friend used to, that is crying for something that happened. Um, I go and help that friend to feel better with himself, you know? And then after that, I was like, wow, this feels good. (laughs) And then I used to always be the kid that 
uh, shares everything in the school that takes like all of my food that I used to take. I always used to share with everyone. I was always that kid and I loved it. And then um, it all turned out, it all changed when I went to the next level. It was in 2019 when I got out of school and it was like a year off school. It started like that, but now it's just totally not in school right now. Um, but, and then in that year I started traveling with my dad all over the world and we, um, we were writing our goals for 2019 and my dad that day just gave me the idea to write a book. And I was like, whoa, papa. Hey, well, my, I'd say papa because that's in Spanish, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Whoa, dad, that's just crazy. I mean, I'm 13 years old and I don't have anything to share with like with anyone. I I don't have a title. I just got out, got out of school. I don't have any experience. I don't have anything, you know? And I don't know anything about life. So why why would I write a book? But then I, I was just feeling so scared of of uh of being different you know of being like that the only kid that writes a book at 13 years old and then but the next day I was just I just woke up and I started hearing these voices like yes yes do it Danny yes you will see how many people you will impact with this book and then I I went to my dad's room and with Regan my stepmom and I I I told him like okay I'm ready. And that's when it all started. And then I write, I started writing my book. Then I started creating value content um, for social media, for YouTube. And I started seeing the people that just loved it. And, you know, I realized that I have so many things to share everything that I'm learning every day by just when I commit a mistake, I just learn by by that mistake. And then I share that with the world. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I have a great message to share and I can help not only adults, but teens and, and kids, you know? So that's when it all started. And I realized that I have everything I need to create the life that I love. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. That's incredible. But I, there's so many things that, that I, I need to go back to um, <laughs> that you said, like, I was like, you know, wow. Okay. Let's go back to when, when you were saying how, like, you didn't fit in, you were, you know, you were the boy that, you know, pretend to be the superhero. You were doing yeah. music, you were doing all this. How old were you at that time? You were eight. Is that what you said? Um, well, Let's say, yeah, eight, kind of like a seven, eight, something like okay. that. Yeah. And so it's it's interesting how you worded it because you were kind of, you said you were like the outcast. You didn't fit in. Yeah. You know, and, and you were a free spirit, right? Mm -hmm. And imagine, think about how many kids were like you. And they were, and, and even still today are like you and they're mm. stifled at that age. And I think it's at that age where, you know, I was just writing this, um, this, this morning about how, when is it, at what age is it that young people go from believing I can do and be anything I want to being told they have to come back down to reality, mm. right? Like, mm -hmm. and what age is it that adults decide that that's what they need to tell kids? Like you can dream as long as you want until it's not okay anymore. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Right. So right. there's like that box. And mm -hmm. then your way of dealing with it was like, I'm not going to be the outsider. I'm going to try and fit in. Mm-hmm. And so by trying to fit in, you became somebody that you did not even recognize. Exactly. Yeah. And so how long did you take that path of trying to fit in? Um, let's say for two years, something like that, two to three years. 
it was like that just trying to be someone else it wasn't me you know it's, and and I, taking that road of, of bullying other kids like it's yeah. amazing that being the bully is what you was what or what is seen by young kids as being popular and cool mm-hmm. yeah right? yeah that's true you know? Yeah, it's, it's it's crazy. Like you pull the others and you just feel more important. Like you have that power to judge others because you're not real to yourself. You're not, you don't want others to see who you truly are or like how different you are or your fears or mm-hmm. anything that you don't want others to see. Right. But it's just, it's just that mask that you put on, right? Mm-hmm. Just, it's not even, even though you might feel happy or you might feel you might look happy in the outside world, but in the inside, with my experience, I can say that I was totally scared, unhappy, but I was just scared of change, you know? So of course, yeah, I wanted to be someone else. I wanted to to be myself, but I was scared of not being important, of not, to not fit in, to not be popular. And that's the ego actually, right? That wants right. to be popular, yeah. And it's amazing what people do, kids and adults alike, Mm -hmm. in order to fit in. But when you analyze the concept of fitting in, fitting into what? And Mm. fitting into whose reality at the end of the day, right? Because what you may perceive as fitting in and what I may think is fitting in could be two completely different right? Yeah, right. It depends on your environment at the time. So I find that really, really interesting. And it's, it's amazing. And when you look deeper into what you were dealing with at that point as a child, Mm. um, it must've been very, very difficult for you. Um, And however, I think the one message to get out of this one is that like those kids that were, that are like you today in the sense of they're musically inclined, they're pretending to be superheroes, they want to save the world and all that stuff. Like, I think that they're the ones, if you look at the successful people today, most of the successful people today were those children. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Right? They, the weren't most... the ones, they weren't the ones that fit in. No. No, no, no. They're actually the different kids, the, the kids that dream to be a superhero. Mm-hmm. I think <laughs> it's really so important. It's, that's an important message to get out there to mm-hmm. kids that are like, you know, you may feel like you don't fit in today, but don't worry, because the majority of, of those that are successful today didn't fit in back then either, you know, to whatever whatever box society chooses to put exactly and actually i think that you don't even you don't even have to fit in to feel accepted it's just something it's just part of it's just in your mindset Mm -hmm. like no matter who you become no matter what you do in the outside world you will still feel the same way because it's something inside of you not outside of you so it's actually about how can you feel accepted right now how can you accept yourself right right now not waiting till other people's other Mm -hmm. people accept you just how can i accept myself and not be always depending on anyone else on the outside world how can i feel happy with who i am right now with myself right and actually i think as you said it's just so that's so important it's just feeding to what like there's no there's no box like we are all different people we are all different we actually we literally have different brains mm-hmm. And I have different beliefs than you and I have different fears than you and I have different insecurities in you. We're all different. And at the end, like actually the people care more about what the others think about them than them judging other people. Like sometimes we feel another person is judging us, but it's actually the opposite. That person is just scared of being judged by others so we're all in little worlds we're all in our own world and we just we can just create the reality that we want you know no matter what we do there's always going to be people that disagree with what we do but there's always going to be people that are actually going to be going to get inspired by you and by your Mm -hmm. example 
For sure. For sure. And, and that's so interesting because, you know, when you think about, you know, social media and you think about how many people look to the outside for that, that inner gratification, mm. to, you know, so whether it's social media, whether it's a friend, whether it's a boy or a girl or whatever it might be to make them fill that void, like fill their bucket inside, mm -hmm. so to speak. Right. Yeah. But that's not lasting. And so how do you find, or how did you find that place where you feel fulfilled no matter whether someone likes or doesn't like your post or whether someone, you know, likes you in school or not in school, where did that mindset shift change for you in the sense that you stopped looking outside and you started looking inside? Mm. Well, actually I changed this mindset, like let's say the, the last year, because um, even though I was writing, I wrote my book and actually when I was writing my book, it helped me so much. It actually helped me to realize that my book was more than just impacting people, but it was actually something for me to feel like I'm unstoppable. I can create whatever I want. And actually all of my friends in my school started judging me because I Get out, got out of school and I started writing a book and they started, um, they started, um, sorry, they just started like commenting Alice? on my post. Yeah, yeah. And it was super bad. I felt super, super sad, super depressed. But then I realized I started just looking at all of the negative comments and then all of the positive comments. And I started seeing that there was people, even though I got a lot of negative comments, I just saw the positive comments and how I impacted the, the, the uh, other people. And there were people saying, telling me like, Tani, you changed my life. No way you're only 13 years old and you're writing a book. Like, oh my God, I'm so inspired. I want to go and write a book. Oh, <laughs> and sorry, let me just oh, plug okay. in this. <laughs> no worries, hon. Yeah, like that, so... Uh, I bet you most of the people that were making the negative comments mm -hmm. were your supposed people that you knew, I'm imagining, or people yeah. friends of yours, exactly. right? Yeah, they were friends of mine. And I actually knew what was going on in their lives. And I remember them telling me like, oh, Danny, I, I want to write a book. I travel. I want to travel all over the world. You know, I want to achieve all of these things. And when they started seeing that I was doing what they wanted to do like I knew they were jealous I knew what was going on in their mind and I knew that they weren't the people that I wanted in my life and, and it's something really sad because it would just hold on before you finish that yeah. it's really sad in the sense that instead of celebrating you and being happy for you I know yeah and saying you know what you know I'm gonna do that too someday mm. I'm so happy that's happening to you they chose to take the the low road and say, you know what, like you what you know, were negative towards you. And that's really sad. That's really, that's really too bad because I bet you that hurt a lot. I mean, yeah, that moment, but it's crazy because a couple of months ago I just started seeing that a lot of these friends just started following me in and they started just liking my posts. And then I started receiving some messages of them telling me, like, oh man, I knew you were going to 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 go, to do big things in this world you mm -hmm. inspire me so much i'm sorry for everything i did so oh, you know it's crazy because sometimes we just think like what is going on right now is going to be like this for all our life mm -hmm. right but um yes, i think when, at that age it was maturity too i think yeah probably, you know yeah you exactly were, that age you were 13 and if they were 13 yeah they didn't really know how to handle it but now yeah looking back well I was pretty stupid to I know <laughs> yeah <laughs> but something that really helped me with everything is just stop caring about the positive comments because that's the thing when we care too much about the positive comments and you know I'm gonna post this because I know it's gonna get a lot of likes and a lot of people are gonna like it 
Um, but at the end of the day, if you care too much about the positive comments, you will care too much for the negative comments. It's always the same thing because you're looking for um, outside opinions, right? Like you're trying to be liked by the by the the other people. So I I just stopped caring about the positive comments. Like every time something someone uh, comments something positive, I just say thank you. But I knew, I already knew it was this way. I already knew I'm unstoppable. I already knew I'm this special. I already knew my mission. But thank you so much for supporting me. But it's not like it changes something in me because the moment when I stop, when I just, just like the positive comments stop changing something in me, the negative comments will stop changing something in me too, right? It's going to be the same thing. You just got to, like you're just gonna do what you feel that you want to do not what you feel the people are gonna like right you know I think the thing is this too is instead of focusing you know you you focus on on you but you also focus on the message right yeah exactly and, and I was listening you know who Les Brown is um no, no. okay so he's a motivational speaker mm -hmm. in the United States and uh, Evan Carmichael? No, I'm sorry, no. no. <laughs> okay, so two great motivational speakers that yeah. I highly recommend. And Evan Carmichael is a YouTuber as well. Like, All right. super, super. Um, he, he wrote a book, book called Built to Serve. And, his, and, and yesterday they were both talking on Clubhouse. And they were talking about how, you know, when you focus on the, the message and not the messenger, right? So we're the messenger. But and so if you focus on what it is you're putting out there, what you want that message to be, mm. even if you help one person, you know, the whole idea is that you're always being true to yourself. Mm. Because your message is ultimately your why right? Mm. Your purpose. And yeah. so I think that's really important to, like you said, not get caught up in, okay, this person said this and it's negative and this person is positive. Like for the most part, you're going to get, you're always going to have, you know, everyone's always going to have haters, no matter what, yeah. no matter how you look at it, no one's always going to like you because not everybody, not everybody does. And no one's always going to love you in it's it's in between but it's what is it that are you staying true to who you want to be and mm. what you want to leave you know on this yeah. on this earth right and i i love that because i think actually if you are getting haters and there's haters just commenting negative stuff in your account or in your videos I, I think it's actually something good, you know, because it means that you are being different and it's, it's about how you handle those haters. Because if you're getting haters, it's not about going in and just fighting with those haters. It's actually, how can I serve you? You know, because I think when we hate you, like someone someone happy is not going to hate another person. Someone happy is not going to, um, to comment something negative on another person's account that is trying mm -hmm. to help other people, right? Okay. So if that person is commenting something negative, you just got to know that that person is going through something and to feel right. better with himself, with herself, um, if that person is trying to make other people feel bad, make other people feel really sad. Really important. That's really, yeah. really important, especially for young people who don't necessarily know how to mm -hmm. deal with it. Most people who are being negative or hating has nothing to do with you. It has exactly. everything to do with themselves. It says more about themselves than about you, actually. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. And, the sooner, and the sooner people, even adults they can understand and realize that like, you know, a lot of times I, I will say, you know, I, I feel sorry for that person because mm. they just, 
they they must be they're sad or they're they're missing something that they feel yeah. they need to act that, that way or be that way. And so I pray for them. So, and like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's the best way. I actually, when I do that, when I, I actually, I haven't got any new haters right now because I've talked about a lot about haters and about what is going, what is actually going through their mind when they go and hate other people. So I think all the haters just, I don't know what happened with them, but when I get used to get haters, what I used to do is um, I used to just comment something like positive, like just commenting, you know what? Thank you so much for your comment. I really appreciate it. You know that I'm need, I'm here for you if you ever need something. Um, I'm your friend, you know, something like that instead of just going and fighting because if you go and fight with that person, you're actually just, just making it worse. You're right. not helping that hater and how can you help someone that is disagreeing Absolutely. with with you right and at the end of the day what happened is that those haters became my fans number one <laughs> yeah, so actually there it's a cry it's a it's a cry for help kind yeah of. exactly you know yeah in, mm -hmm. a, in the wrong way but at the same time it is a cry for help and so by you saying that you know thank you so much for that feedback they may have never experienced an ounce of kindness in their mm. life you know mm. and i often say that sometimes we have to understand that we might run into people in this world that are negative or or hurtful or you think them you know terrible people but they may go through an entire day without any love or kindness so when you put it in that perspective, you just have to say, you know what, let me just be kind. And maybe that's all that they need. Mm. You know, it's kind of like the Grinch at Christmas, you know, you think about the Grinch and once he had, they had that loving kindness, you know, the yeah. story about the Grinch, right? The, I, I, I don't know. No, you don't know the Grinch, no. Christmas, the green, the green. Well, I've seen, I think I've seen a movie, but a long time ago. Okay. So the Grinch <laughs> was like this, this, he wanted to stop Christmas, okay? Because everybody's mm -hmm. all happy and lovey and all that stuff. And he, his heart was too small. And anyways, in the end of the story, he goes and uh, and everybody starts like giving him all this love and 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 kindness. And so he, his heart melts and he becomes. Oh wow! Yeah, he he gets to he starts being kind and generous too in the end. So like wow. you know, those types of things. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's kind of like that, you know, a lot of people walk around this world without any love or kindness, you know? Mm -hmm. And so by showing them that no matter how they treat you, that's really the important part. So tell me about your books. You, you've written two of them. Yeah. And what yeah. are they called? Um, well, the first one I um, is the, the 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 first one that I started writing when I was 13 years old. I released it when I was 14 uh, in 2020, and it's called The Real Success, and it became a bestseller in just like under one day. It was crazy, and the people loved it. So I just impacted so many people. So many actually. So many friends from school uh, read that book and messaged me like, Danny, wow, I didn't know you knew all of this stuff. And I, it just helped me so much. And I, I saw the impact that did in, in the world, you know, in a lot of people. Now, you originally so, wrote it in Spanish, right? Yeah. And then I, it got translated to English, English the okay. first one. But the the second one and the second one is not translating in English right now, but I gotta translate it. <laughs> and um, well, the first one is the real success, and I talk about how the success is actually something inside of you. It's not about outside. So it's it's. I didn't know when I was writing the book, I didn't know what I was writing it about. It was crazy. It was just every day there was just a new theme and a new thing to talk about and. When I, when I, uh, when I was writing it, I just, I went to look at all of the pages and all of the themes and everything that I've talked about. And it was like, wow, I've talked about a lot of things, you know, how did I know all of these things? What the fuck? <laughs> so, <laughs> it was crazy. Everything that came out of, of my mind, you know, and 
And then I just, um, when I, when I was studying more about all of these things, like successful people, and I started meeting a lot of um, successful people and millionaires around the world, I just realized that there's so many successful people people that look success, successful in the outside, but in the inside that actually, they actually feel empty. They feel unhappy. Oh, they, wow. they don't feel without a, with a purpose. Right. So I, I was like, wow, like how, how, how is this success? How can this be the, the, the thing that a lot of people want to achieve in their lives, be unhappy, but just, just look that, you have the perfect life, you know, with right. a Ferrari and maybe the perfect girl, the perfect boy, the perfect man. And, but then, so that's when I realized that success is actually something inside of you. And that's why I called it uh, the real success because so that's- I want to go into that because seeing yeah. how the podcast is called The Secret to Success isn't so secret. What is the real success? Hmm. Okay. So, so, I mean, I know people have to read your book, but I know, I know. No, no, no. But I can totally share of what, of in your opinion, is the real success. Yeah. So I think success is just related to everything. We relate it so much to being famous and something outside or followers or money, business, you know, but I think actually success is just, it's just, life success is just every day being happy doing something that you love like evolving every day in every area of your life not only in business you know but also in your health there's so many people that are making so much money and they feel successful but how how are how are they with their health you know do you see them and they look low they look so how can i say like so tired right. so they're just they're not feeling just with energy and to keep right. going, keep living life at the other fullest. So right. it's about evolving every day. How can I be better than yesterday? How can I spend more time with my family? How can I make new friends? How can I work on my fears? How can I be more peaceful? Just in every situation, how can I be my my better version? You know, how can I become my better version? How will my better version my best version, what will my best version do right now? Right. So that's something that I ask myself so much. And it just helps me to start acting, breathing, talking like my best version, not who I think I was like, oh, I'm not confident. I am depressed. I am sad. No, I am already the person that I will, I would always I've, I, I, I've always wanted to be, you know? So, and then that's why I have my second book that is called, uh, you are who you think you are. And like this that. book, yeah, because it's actually about that because I realized that you are truly who you think you are. It's about your beliefs. So if you start believing, let's say that you're not confident with yourself, right? And you say, okay, no, I can't talk to these people because I'm not confident. So you're just repeating this every day in every situation. No, I'm not. No, I can't do that because I'm not confident. Oh, no, I can't do that because, because, no, 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 no. But what if you start believing that you're confident? What if you start believing that you are already that person that you would like to become? Instead of just putting it into the future, how can you be it right now? How can you embody it right now? Mm -hmm. So okay, I want to be confident. I am confident. I am already confident. What will my confident version of me would do right now? Okay, this version will go and talk to these people without even thinking about it. It's just, let's just be present and just talk to new people and just be myself. Easy, you know? So that's why I wrote this other book because it's, it's just so important about our beliefs and how our beliefs create our reality and not only in the outside, but also in the, in our inside world. So mm -hmm. create ourselves. So, and who creates the beliefs we can create them. Absolutely. Not they just, they're just the, the old beliefs from your parents, your right. friends, your. And it's also a part of coming over those beliefs and trying yeah. to. And understanding what, what those beliefs are, because exactly. I mean, you were fortunate enough that 
you had parents that, you know, motivated you to be an open thinker, to not limit your thoughts, to, mm. you know, to um, not have that scarcity mindset. Whereas a lot of, a lot of children and a lot of kids today and parents themselves, it's not because they, they want to hurt their kids, but they don't necessarily know yeah. that, that it doesn't, that it doesn't have to be a scarcity mind. It just happens unconsciously. Yeah. You don't even know what, what you're, you're taught children. and they're to pair, you know, exactly taught them and they taught you yeah. and, that, and it's generational. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you think about it that way, you only know what you know. Right. Mm -hmm. And so unless you are the the idea is brought to to light in a different way, um, then you don't necessarily know that. And so um, I think that that is really important. And I love that you are taking that step to enlighten young people. Mm. Um, and I was and I just think that that's important because especially young people want to hear it from young people. I could sit here and talk about it all day, but you know, at the same time, they're like, what do you know? You know, you're older and yeah, you, you already think you could do whatever you want, but when yeah. they hear it from someone, their own age, who's mm. actually living it, that's a whole other story. And I know so, that's yeah. why, that's why I'm so focused right now and just, helping other kids and teenagers because we are the future we are the next generation and we're gonna have to change the world for the better and we better just be prepared you know just start living the best life today why not today so many people realize all of these things about happiness purpose health um when they are 30 40 or there's some people that even die without knowing all of these things so how can we the teenagers the next generation know all of these things today to know to not only create the life that we love but also change the world for mm -hmm. the better right so mm -hmm. helping each other and that's something in that um that I feel is going to help a lot of teenagers because just, just like me, for me it was really hard even though I had really good parents and I mean, it wasn't like always a perfect relationship. Nothing is perfect, right? Not even, right. Sure. even if they, if they knew about beliefs and fears and spirituality and all of these things, we didn't have a good relationship. And it's been something that we've been working a lot on the past years, but it was really hard for me to realize all of these things. It's been a whole process. And I think just for the people to, to end this podcast is not, it's not about comparing yourself to other people. There might be a 25 year old um, person that is just listening to this uh, podcast and is just realizing that it, she, he or she is too old to start right now because I'm 16 and I already know all of these things. But I think we all have um, our own process, right? And it all happens for a reason. So for if you're already listening to this podcast, it's for a reason and you went for, through all of those things in the past for a reason so it's not that you did something wrong or that you didn't start before it doesn't matter that what it matters is that you already know this that you are already waking up and that you already know the solution so it's about taking action today you know yeah. so because Absolutely. we all have different processes so it's just about living the present and create the future that we want. Okay, so we are now going to go to talking about school. Okay. Because you at this moment are homeschooled, correct? Quote, unquote. Yeah, home. I could say that I'm actually let's say life school life school <laughs> okay so how does that now we know that you were in regular school in elementary um you were bullied then you became the bullier and then yeah. you changed back what grade was it that you stopped going to physical school 
I was 13 years old. Uh, I got out, yeah, it was 2019. I was on seventh grade. Yeah. Okay. So, and what was, what made you, or what was your reason for, because it was also in 2019 when you were 13 that you decided to write the book. Yeah. So yeah. what was the, uh, what was the thing that said, I'm going to, I, I'm, I'm not going to go to school anymore. What, or what did your parents say to that? Yeah, actually, uh, my dad had the idea and we had it long time before 2019, but it mm -hmm. was really hard to make it a reality because um, my mom wasn't a, didn't, didn't like the idea. She wanted me to go to school and then to college or, you know, the typical thing, follow yeah. the system. Um, but she's actually, I mean, she's amazing. She's a healer and stuff, but she's really a believer of, of school. And also because something about school is just the social thing, being mm -hmm. with other kids, being with other teens and have fun, you know. Um, yeah, so we had the idea my dad had the idea first of all and when he told me i i loved the idea <laughs> it was it was my dream and then we did it because first of all I, I wasn't feeling my mom said that it was important for me to go to school and to be with other kids we to be with other teens but i didn't even feel that those teens those kids were the, the people that i wanted in my life I didn't uh -huh. really have fun with them. It was just something superficial, but I didn't feel like I could be myself with them. Right. You know, I didn't, I didn't feel like they were the true, the real friends. Mm -hmm. So I said, why would I have, why, if I have the possibility to travel the world, right? Because my dad is, was traveling the world at that, at that time and just going to events and learning and speaking so if I have the possibility to get out of school travel the world get to know more people uh, expand my my mind you know with mm -hmm. new possibilities new options um you have if I have this possibility why not just go right right if I don't even feel comfortable right now going to school I used to hate school so much they used to the, the teachers used to treat me like a, how could I say it? Like a, like a, they used to bully me, you know, the teachers, mm -hmm. because I was that worst student <laughs> in the, in the class. I didn't care about any, really like, care about the grades. Yeah. Yeah. And I used to always, in, do you say interrogate in English? Interrogate? Like ask. Yeah. In the usual. Yeah. It's kind of like, um, now, now you've got the word interrogate in my mind, but it's like, um, you know, just question what they would say. Exactly. Instead of just believing it like that, I uh -huh. used to just question what they say. And they didn't like that because sometimes they didn't even have the, the, the solution. The, the, um, right. The answer. The, response, the answer. Exactly. So I was uh, the worst kid <laughs> in the school. I didn't get any good grades. And I was always feeling like this is not my path. This is not what I like. I feel so different than the others. How could they um how could we all be in a different classroom like hey, in, a, in the same classroom we're all different we are we all have different brains literally we all have different dreams beliefs fears and we all have to go in a class 20 people 20 kids and learn the same thing this doesn't make sense and it's also like learning not only the same thing but something that is not helping you it's just memorizing stuff and then one year later after that, you won't remember any of that. So it's not something that is helping you. So that's why I wanted to get out of school. And then my mom agreed. We first started with one year. So I told her, mom, mom I just want to be one year off school. You know, <laughs> it started like that. And mm -hmm. then we started seeing the results. That first year, I didn't really uh, take action much i just wrote my book and well i i created my first online course and learned a lot of things actually i did a lot of things yeah i mean you, you wrote a book and you create an online course like <laughs> i wouldn't yeah. say that's pretty good <laughs> yeah so then my mom saw the potential and well not only the potential but she saw that 
I'm doing what I love and this is something that makes me feel happy and I love traveling with my dad. I, I'm getting to know amazing people from all over the world, leaders. I'm getting to expand so much. So then it became my lifestyle <laughs> and then I didn't, I decided to not go back to school. Wow. And what does your dad do? My dad, like, yeah, well, he's, um, He's a coach, he's a speaker, a, a motivational speaker. He's a, the, the founder of Quantum the Method, Quantum Flow, which is a method that is changing people's lives from all over the world, combining um, med a Chinese medicine with yoga and with uh, quantum physics, with, um, sorry, I just forget the names in, in English, but it's just okay. a whole combination in, of, all the best met methods just com like combining everything and it's just so you have a really good teacher like right there like yeah i know he's, he's right a, he's like, yeah. i'm always learning with him and just just by by being with him and um I don't know, like every time we go on a walk and in the beach or just here in, in our property and we're just together or when, when we're driving on the car, in the car, I'm always learning something. We're always talking. We're always um, expressing our feelings, how we feel. And uh, we always. And I think that's, that's important because a lot of times, especially with, you know, it's that societal or traditional way of thinking that men or males are not supposed to express their feelings or oh, show their feelings. Yeah, that's something. And, and yeah. I think that's great that you do that with your father mm -hmm. because yeah. ultimately I, then you show that to the world. Exactly. At first it was kind of uncomfortable and it's still, sometimes it's still uncomfortable, you know? What but makes I it really, uncomfortable? I don't know. Like just feeling that he's my father it's been really hard for me to learn from him because i still have that part of me just being the 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 rebel you know mm -hmm. so yeah. sometimes i'm for, for example i got certified on his uh, method quantum flow and i'm a certified quantum flow practitioner but it was really hard for me to learn from him uh, because I was always judging him unconsciously and, oh, you know, my dad and, ah, I don't care about what he says. Oh my goodness. Why am I doing this? You but know? I think that's normal because I think with a lot yeah. of kids, like you, somebody else, somebody else's parent could say the exact same thing your dad says, but you'd listen to the other parent or the other person first, as opposed to your parent. I don't know. It's interesting. I don't know why. That's um, true. But yeah, like you, you definitely notice that from, from kids a lot that, yeah. you know, that a lot of times someone else will say the exact same thing that the parent says, but it's, it sounds, maybe it sounds better from, from the other parent than it, than it did from your parent. I, I don't know, <laughs> but like you said, it's that underlying subconscious rebel kind of mm -hmm. thing. I'm totally. not going to listen to, I'm not going to listen to them but I'll, exactly. I'll listen to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's been so, really hard. I love it. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just been really hard to work on this, but every day I'm just evolving more and just mm -hmm. getting to know this part of me, you know, getting to know this rebel. Why am I a rebel, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but it's been, it's been a whole training, I could say. It's been sometimes... We, we think that learning is going on a class and being there for eight hours and learn and get a title and, you know, but actually that true, when we truly learn um, is when we are truly present, we, we learn from our mistakes, when we learn from other people, when we learn from our experience, when we learn from nature, I've been, I, I just, I can just learn so much without doing any online course, you know, without learn, without going on a class and sit there for two hours and take notes. I can just learn from nature, go and walk and then just ask myself, what, what is it that makes nature so, so, so beautiful? How can I implement this to my life? Well, I think the thing is this, is that like learning is doing, right? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, um, or at least, I mean, you can, learn things 
um, certain things at school, but most of the things that you learn in, in school in traditional school, unfortunately, is only surface deep. You know, mm. they, they give you a, a presentation of, of different things, some things you use, some things you might not use, some things are irrelevant. But the thing about school is that they don't allow you to necessarily explore mm. in the areas that you want to explore. Exactly. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Or, and, 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 or, you know, every class is the same thing at the same amount of time. But what you might need one class more than and more help in than somebody else might or, mm. you know, and it's not just about sitting there and listening to the teacher, but letting each other teach each other. Right. Yes. yes becoming our own leaders. Right. right. Yeah. And so I think it's it's the methodology that is which we know is archaic, which is it's old. It's, it needs to be, uh, uh, changed. And so what you're doing though, which is wonderful is being able to, you know, if you go out, let's say, I don't know, where was the last place you went with your dad? Where was the last traveling you did with your dad? Um, like on another country. Yeah. It was, it was Mexico. Okay. So say you go to Mexico, you go to Chichen Itza. All right. And you go there, like, you know, you're going. So maybe you'll go and watch a video or read something on the internet or YouTube before you go there. Right. And mm. so you can have a little bit of background about it. And then you go and you explore, but then you're like, oh, I want to know about X, Y, and Z also. Why did this happen or why did that happen? And mm. so then you're able to come home and, and, ask those questions and, and find those answers. And so you're fortunate in that sense, um, in that you are able to uh, actually physically go there and, and mm -hmm. learn that. However, nowadays with the way YouTube is and the internet is, you get a lot of virtual videos, like, you know, those virtual 360s. Yeah. So it's almost like you're there. Yeah. Like in the place and you're looking around and yeah. there's that ability to almost feel like you're there mm -hmm. so I mean I guess it's the next best experience but allowing kids to kind of choose their own path and choose their own adventure mm -hmm. is really important um, because they can still learn because how do you know necessarily you know you you're asked your whole life what do you want to be when you grow up what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? But if you don't know, not even a 10th of what is out there to be when you grow up, how are you supposed to answer that question until you're able to explore all the different things that might interest you, right? Mm -hmm. And so you can't really answer that question. Mm. I will actually change that question to Dude. what will what would you like to do right now? Who would you like to become right. right now today? Absolutely. And and I agree with you there. But you know what I'm I'm saying in the sense of that's what people that's what in school. Yeah, they yeah. Ask you, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Or <laughs> and, or traditional family, they ask you, what yeah. do you want to be? What do you want? Like mm -hmm. and and you make a very good point. Let's be present. Let's be present, but also not just that. I like to think too, and Naveen Jane often says it's like, what problem do you want to solve, right? Mm. Thinking about what's going on in the world, what's going on around me and how can I help others in that as well? Like, not what do I wanna be, what problem do I wanna solve? And finding that mission in your heart to ultimately then go on to finding something that that you love to do as opposed to something that you have to do, right? Mm, right. Or whatever it might be. Um, but yeah, but often so many people just don't live presently, right? Mm. They don't live mm -hmm. in the moment. And it's not an easy thing to live in the moment because it's like, okay, today I got to do this. I've got to do this. I got to do this. I have to do this. I have to go here. I have to go there. <laughs> and tomorrow and the next thing and the next thing. And you're like, um, when are you ever here? And, mm. and I'm guilty of this. I'm not, I'm, uh, you know, I'm a, for, I, I do it all the time. And it's not, it's not the easiest thing to do to be in the moment. Mm. So, yeah. 
Um, so you have an, an, wait, before we go to that question, I want to ask you, so now you're 16. Yeah. And so you haven't been in school since you were 13. Yeah, exactly. How does that work? And just me curious in the sense, like, do you have to be enrolled in a certain program? Like, do you have to show that you're doing something or no? Well, I think it's always, I'm talking about myself, right? With my experience, but I think it's always different for everyone. There's people that want to go to college and they're interested in that. So that's cool. So they got to, you know, do something about it to get the title. But in, mm -hmm. in my case, I don't want to go to, to college. I'm not interested in following the system just because it's not something that I'm passionate about and I already know what I would like to do and I'm already learning so much without having to go to school, getting a title because I know that's not the solution, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I don't have to follow, like I, my, my, my parents don't tell me like, they don't tell me that I have to do something every month. They just right. uh, trust because they know that I'm doing. They see me right. filming always, creating, writing, learning, meditating. So I'm super committed and, and, and they see that, right? Because right. I built this life. It's been a lot of work. In 2019, it was really hard for me to to. To, to do things, to have this discipline, to do the things that I don't really like. But then I found my own way to do the things, you mm -hmm. know, that are important, like learning and, and reading. So right now, for example, I'm a certified coach. I'm a quantum flow practitioner, certified quantum flow practitioner. And I've been doing a lot of other online courses, but it's not something that I have to do. They just try. Right. I explore oh, yeah. and if if today I want to become a clown they just support me in that right. way so, yeah exactly. so that's, that's <laughs> it like you you can definitely uh that's the great part about it is that it doesn't just have to be one thing or one mm -hmm. area and it's that exploration and investigating and there's might be things out there that you may not have thought about yet that one right. day you'll come across and be like, mm -hmm. Ooh, I, you know, I really want to learn more about this, but that's the joy of life where a lot of times all of a sudden you're in school and you have to study and you have to learn and you're in school and then you go to university and you have to learn and then you get out of university and it's almost like nobody ever hears anybody say anymore, you know, you got to learn and study and keep growing. It's almost like you get out of university and it's like, okay, now I go to work and that's it. And no. now your life starts. <laughs> right. You're right? supposed to be like, a lifelong learner. And the thing is that they don't, they never teach you about your body, about health, about purpose, about abundance, about money. If you want to study about, if you want to learn about money, then you got to go to college and learn something related to business and money. But it's right. not even the best uh, teaching, well, you know? Yeah. I mean, technically you need to learn that in high school because if, exactly. if you don't, you know, you get, you turn 18 and you can get a credit card. That's, you could be in some big trouble there. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> and I that's mean, what that whole financial, yeah, that's, and that's what happens. Literacy is exactly. Important. exactly. And that's why there's so many people with, uh, taking drugs and, you know, alcohol and all of these things because they don't know how to spend their money or their health or how, why is it so important, your health, your body, taking care of uh, your body. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't know about it because they don't teach you. They never teach you about this. They do teach you about when your country uh, got independent, but they don't teach you about health and your body and purpose. Like, wow, why, why? Well, and the thing that they don't tell you about when your country got independence is that those few men had to have determination, a vision, you know, desire to, to make a change, all of that psychological thing that they needed to say, I can do this, we can do this, we can have this. Because wow, if you think true. about it, they were going against something that they probably had it not turned out the right way they would have been dead right mm -hmm. so 
That's true. So, I mean, it took a lot of courage. Mm -hmm. You don't even learn about history, about the story of your country. It's just, this is what what it is. Mm -hmm. This is what happened. And that's all. But you don't even learn about their mistakes or what they achieved, how they did it. No. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. It's so Absolutely. Because that would be more interesting. Like Mm -hmm. what was the tactics? What was the way that, what led them to, to get to that? And, and that's the um, even more important than that because, um, yeah. So, all right. Now you have another book coming out. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm actually on a challenge right now. (laughs) So it's a seven day challenge. I just started on Monday. And it's a detox that I'm doing first of all from social media, Netflix, um, and because I was feeling like I was, be- I was, there was an addiction, you know, with those mm-hmm. things, and it was something unconscious. So, so many times we think that addictions are related to alcohol and mm-hmm. drugs, and but there's so many addictions like mm-hmm. sugar with your phone, mm-hmm. uh, with Netflix, movies that we don't even know that they are there. So yeah. I, I, I just I woke up and, and I, I realized that I was addicted, addicted to all of these things. So I wanted to do a detox and I'm on a seven day detox. And instead of going on social media and um, watching movies, I'm writing my third book. And oh. yeah, so, and I'm filming everything for YouTube. And so it's been a really big challenge but I think it's totally possible to write a book in seven days. And uh, yeah, I mean, how I imagine how much more productive you are because we don't realize how much even small increments of time when we stop and we just like scroll or whatever it might be. And um, so, yeah, very interesting. I like that. Have you ever seen The Social Dilemma? Uh, no, I haven't seen it, but I... I already know about all of those, like I've already studied about all of those things. A lot of people have told me about it. They told me that it's really, really cool, Mm -hmm. but I, I like- It's interesting to see um, like the concept of it, especially um, in, you know, in a different, in a different light, like even from, you know, that whole uh, not thinking about how you can be, addicted to your phone or Mm -hmm. feel like you're missing out on something or whatever it might be and not being able to survive with without it and I think more so adults need to be more tolerant of that with young people because as an adult like I know that when I grew up there was not phone cell phone social Mm -hmm. media so I know how to live without it Whereas young people have never experienced not living without it. So they're kind of like, well, what, why not? Why can't, mm-hmm. like, it's, it's always been there. And so I think that, you know, need to be a little bit more empathetic in that sense to so, young people. And, you know, listen to this. I, when I deleted social media from my phone, I just, first of all, in the second that I deleted it, I was kind of scared, right? But then I felt so much peace. I felt so, I don't know. I just felt like there wasn't any more anxiety or stress. I didn't have to go and look on other people's stories. And I just, there's no social media. Now I just go use my phone for WhatsApp. That's, that's everything. Uh, that's yeah, how I, I mean, I guess that says a lot. If it's, if you were having severe, you know, if you were having anxiety and like all of that stuff, then, and then when you weren't, you didn't have it, you felt relieved, then I think it's probably a really good thing that you did. Totally. Yeah. And the first, yeah. And in the first day that I deleted it, it was in the night and I was just having dinner with my, just, just myself and I was just thinking about it just I just there has never I have never had a phone without social media so it was crazy to use my phone and not see any social media app not see 
uh, YouTube or Instagram. And I felt like there wasn't any more social media on this world. I felt like it you were never, disconnected. Exactly. But it, I feel like it never existed social media. Like it was all an illusion. And I was just thinking about what would a world looked like without social media what would I be doing how would I get to know all of these people how would I get to impact all of these people how how just yeah, just, yeah. Uh, interesting isn't yeah. it so interesting I love it it's one of those things like you should definitely then like if that's something that you know I mean there would probably be a really good book you know, going from the moment where you, I, I don't know what the storyline would be, but the character goes from social, having social media and, and depending on it to a time where there is no social media mm. and you literally have to like call on the phone. And if you're out and, and you're at the mall or whatever, and you don't have it, you have to wait until you get home to, to be able to call or check your messages on your answering oh machine that's at your house like whoa that would yeah. be crazy wow no no computer no text message they're just a typewriter that would be a really good good pro project for you i actually did that with my students this past really? year so they had to interview uh different people and find out how they communicated without social media and if they wanted to solve a problem or contact someone, how would they do it? And mm. so it was one of those things that a lot of times you hear people say, oh, it's so hard to, to uh, you know, I'd like to contact this person or this person or to be whatever. And, you know, actually it's 10 times easier now because you can just send a message. They might not answer you, but you don't physically have to go there. Mm -hmm. Like, um, for example, Greg Reed or Doug Vermeeren, when they went to interview all of these like top achievers, they literally had to call them on the phone, try and get somebody to answer the phone, to find, find their number from their secretary, like pre, wow. yeah, like use a phone book, some sort of service, and then you'd have to, they'd literally have to fly there or write them a letter or whatever to do an interview with them, right? Wow, that's crazy. So before, and even now with Zoom, like just in this past year and a half with Zoom, you can actually interview someone face-to-face, mm. -face, whereas before you would physically even still go there to do mm. it. Um, but even still, you want to interview someone you, for a book or whatever it was, you actually have to go to that person and convince them to give up 10 minutes of their time, right? That's like a totally a different world. I, yeah. I just can't imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so it, it'd, be, it'd be an interesting experiment um, mm. for like, I don't know, a week or or something to just like you did, you're doing the seven day challenge, but then say, go even a step further. Say there's somebody that you really want to interview, right? Or mm -hmm. there's somebody that you would really want to contact or uh, someone that you would like to work with and something, and then try and contact or connect with them without in the, without the internet. Oh my God. I, Oh, well, <laughs> now there's a challenge for wow. you. There's a challenge. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you can make a phone call, but you can't use it because we, we you know, back then we were able to use phones, obviously mm -hmm. the, the phone existed, Yeah, but you couldn't use any other internet or, or social media. Even WhatsApp. Media. Yeah. Or WhatsApp, you know, you have to be a straight, straight up phone call. Yep. And that would cost so much too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Yes. So game <laughs> on. No, <laughs> I, I like that. I like that. Maybe I can try it out in 10 years. Let's see. Right. 
at some point, <laughs> in some point in your life, you'll some try point that. in my life, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I think this has been wonderful, and I appreciate you giving me your uh, your perspective and how wonderful it's been to learn and get to know you. I'm really excited that you're going to be a part of of the the education summit coming up. I think young people need to hear what you have to say and your perspective because I think it's really refreshing mm-hmm. um, and I think it will inspire a lot of people that I mean you already do inspire a lot of people but I think it will inspire even more mm-hmm. um, and so if if someone were out there whoever's out there today whoever's going to listen to this and you could say one thing that they could do in this moment, if they feel as though like they don't know what they want to do or they're trapped or they don't feel they, they don't believe in themselves or can have success, what would you tell them that they could do to take action in this moment? Oh, wow. Just one thing. One thing or like, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be like one word, but okay. in general one. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's, okay. Well, I could say just something that has really helped me to achieve all of these things is to do what I'm scared to do. You know, sometimes we, when we don't, when we don't listen, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> when, um, when we listen to our fears and we don't do what we're, what we're scared to do, it's like we're nurturing them. It's like a little baby it's like an energy you know it's like a living being so it, it becomes bigger and bigger and stronger so it's about how can you break with that fear how can you let it go how can you do exactly what you're scared to do if you're scared to do a video to make a video then do it just do it if you're mm-hmm. scared to write a book then try it out just do exactly what you're scared to do it doesn't matter if it's perfect it doesn't matter uh, if it's the way you wanted it to be, just explore, just do it. And that's another thing, just leave the present, explore. So many times we think that um, um, our purpose is one thing, and but I think like we can always, it's about connecting with, um, with our inner child, you know, and exploring mm-hmm. and playing because that's what life really is, is, is to play, it's to explore to try out new things and so many times there's a lot of things that we're passionate about but we we don't even know because we haven't we've never tried them out you know mm-hmm. so it's about exploring and living the present if you today if you like to if you like magic magic tricks then just be, become a magician right now and do mm-hmm. the best you can and try to make money with it if you want right. or not however whatever you want but then if you let's say in a few weeks or in years you would like to become a soccer player then you do everything that you can to make it a reality right so that's what I what I would say (laughs) wonderful excellent advice excellent advice I couldn't agree more so thank you so much and um I'm excited to continue to learn and follow you. So thank you. Mm, Thank you so much for everything you're doing, for your purpose, for helping a a lot of people to to connect with, with, um, to to, like helping a lot of people to realize it's about the education system, right? And to step out and do something about it because I believe that's the future. And that's what we need, people like you, leaders uh, that are standing out and that are uh, speaking, you know, that are doing something about it, not only thinking about it and knowing that that's happening. No, what can I do? So that's something that I love about you. So thank you so much for for this. And yeah, thank you everyone for, for listening.